Only on Fox tonight, war typically does not evoke good memories. But one man, given the nickname the Candy Bomber and Uncle Wiggly Wings, he helped change that for thousands of children in war-torn Germany. Gail Halverson was a transport pilot during the Berlin airlift after World War II, and in addition to dropping off much-needed supplies, he dropped candy to the children who had literally nothing. And it made an incredible impression. Danielle Miller has more on the 95-year-old retired airman's sweet legacy. Being a farm kid, I wanted to fly. Watch the airplanes go over the farm, me down the dirt, and the airplanes up in the sky. Boy, I want to do that. For those of you that remember World War II or the Berlin Airlift, you may have heard the name Gail Halverson. He was the epitome of the American who stays, who helped in this situation, but also uh, continued to guarantee um, West German freedom um, later on. After World War II, the Allies split up the defeated Germany into four zones of occupation. The Soviet Union, now known as Russia, took control of the eastern half, and the western half was divided among the United States, Great Britain, and France. The German capital city, Berlin, was located deep in the Soviet zone, and in June of 1948, the Soviets planned to starve the western city by blocking all entrances and cutting off all supplies. It cannot supply itself. Uh, you know, you, 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 you cannot grow enough food in the city to supply 2.2 million people. After this, America planned to supply the city by air, this effort now known as the Berlin Airlift. The effort lasted nearly a year and carried more than 2.3 million tons of goods into West Berlin. During the time, a supply plane took off and landed every 30 seconds. We couldn't even get off the, the base to look around. And coming in over the city, it looked like a moonscape. The skyscrapers were empty buildings, just fingers to the sky. It, it just terrible. It, you couldn't believe the devastation of flying in. The planes made nearly 300,000 flights in all, many of those flights belonging to Colonel Gil Halverson. One in particular changed everything. During some downtime, he decided to do some sightseeing. I wanted to get on the ground. I had a, always carried a movie camera, and I wanted to get pictures on the ground. On this day, he saw about 30 kids playing near the fence of the Tempelhof Air Base. Those kids began talking with the young pilot. Don't worry about us. We don't need enough to eat. Just don't give up on us. Someday we'll have enough to eat. But if we lose our freedom, we'll never get it back. Kids, 10 to 15, give me election American, how important freedom was. And it just blew me out of my socks. I just couldn't believe those kids. After about an hour with the children, Halverson started to leave. I started to run. I made about 50 yards. A voice came to me, clear as a bell. I stopped. I couldn't figure it out. I says, why are these kids so different? And then I knew what they've been through and their attitude. Attitude. That voice, he says, told him to go back. I reached my pocket and all I had was two sticks of double, really double and gun. I looked at 30 kids right there, eyeball to eyeball. Two sticks were going to get bloody noses. He passed the gum through the fence and watched as the children split it up and passed it around. When there was none left, they passed the wrappers around to smell. After seeing this, Halverson was inspired to do more. For flight regulations, I was known as a tough guy and fly by the book and everything else. And I was horrified to hear myself say, come back tomorrow, stand in the wrong place. When I come in, I'll drop the candy bars to you if you'll share it. The next day, he dropped three candy parachutes made from handkerchiefs through the flare chute before landing. The children knew it was him because he did what he said he would do. He wiggled the wings of his plane. The next day, came back about noon, good weather, came over the top of the airfield. 30 kids right up to that don't they? they hadn't told another soul. Wiggled the wings, they just went crazy. Rather than being punished, Halverson was encouraged to continue the candy drops. Soon, letters made out to Uncle Wiggly Wings arrived with children requesting drops in certain areas. So when you take off, come down the spray river, turn right one block, and go down the second house on the right. I'll be in the backyard every day at 2 o'clock, drop it there. The drops became so popular, it expanded into Operation Little Vittles. And once this news hit the U.S., candy donations began pouring in. Out of little things proceeded that which was great. I got taught in Sunday school. 
And the little decisions you make put your footsteps on where you end up in life, whether it's good or bad. In the end, the candy bomber and his crews dropped 23 tons of chocolate. Attitude, gratitude, serves for self, and the little decisions you make put your footsteps where you end up. And that, uh, that's what those kids taught me. The pilot, the candy bomber, Uncle Wiggly Wings, the man with a humanitarian heart with just two sticks of gum transformed the perceptions of two countries once at war, later lending a helping hand, making freedom a reality. Without hope, the soul dies. So without hope, the soul dies. And so you got to have hope. And uh, that, uh, that candy was just a symbol of hope. It was hope for a better future. And that kept him going. Danielle Miller, Fox 10 News. Wow. You can see why they call him the greatest generation. Oh, man. Tell you. In 1970, Halverson, he returned to Germany, this time as the commander of an air base in West Berlin. Schools in Germany are named after him, and he was even awarded the highest medal of honor by the German military. Now he lives in Tucson, in the Tucson area. Halverson still flies, and he does candy drops for special occasions.